Hi guys and welcome back. So we are going straight back into America in the 1920s um, within our unit on America from 1920 to 1973. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about entertainment. So one of the features of the boom and the roaring 20s um, for this part of the course is that people start to access entertainment in such a um, more significant way than they ever have done before. Now, part of the reason for this is that the working week drops from 47.4 hours to 44.2 hours. And alongside that, for the majority of people, the wages are rising. So wages rise approximately 11%. People therefore have more time to spare, but they also have more money to spend. And so they start looking for things to spend that money on. That is where we start to see the beginnings of this idea of hobbies and entertainment and um, you know, doing things in life that are not just simply working um, and providing for your family. Family. Now, we call this period the Roaring Twenties, um, and that's the kind of the name for it. Now, so there's the figures if you wanted them. Now, at this time, kind of, it's also a period of crazy crazes. So we have a Mahjong craze, which was a Chinese board game. You play with these little pieces up here. Um, then we have the crossword craze when everyone starts doing crosswords. We have marathon dancing, you know, a competition of who can dance for the longest. And we even have this um, crazy thing where people would sit on top of a pole and see how long they could sit there without falling off. Um, that was called pole sitting. Now, the record was set by Alvin Shipwreck Kelly, who sat on top of a flagpole for 49 days. Um, so this really is a period of people trying to, you know, discover new things and being interested in things like this for the very, very first time. Now, another reason why we have this kind of new craze of entertainment at this time is because of the accessibility of the car. Now, remember, I talked previously about Ford and about Ford motor cars, um, the assembly line and mass production, the fact that, you know, so many more families were able to buy cars on higher purchase. This helped cities to grow and it allowed people to access leisure facilities because you could drive places now. So what I'm going to do in this video is go through um, kind of four main areas of entertainment, radio, jazz, sport and cinema, and give you kind of a brief overview and some really important key information you can use in your exams about what happened within that particular area um, in the 1920s. So we'll start with the radio now. The first radio station in the world was KDKA, first aired on the 2nd of November 1920 in Pittsburgh. Within a year, it was broadcasting a daily show. And by 1922, we have 508 different radio stations. Most families have access to a radio um, in Chicago. That case study I talked about in the previous video um, there was one radio or there were two radios per three families. So even in kind of, you know, places where we have really, really significant issues of poverty, there is still access to radios, even within families and, you know, joint family units. By 1929, the NBC was making $150 million. So radio is becoming an increasingly used um, area of entertainment. Now, another thing they did through the radio was broadcast sports matches as well as advertisements. So radio is incredibly important to the boom. Now, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is jazz. Now, jazz music obviously is an incredible music. Um, and the radio gave access to this and it became incredibly popular by being played um, in people's homes. Now, jazz music was kind of associated with the African-American community who brought jazz to the cities with them. Um, and it began to appeal to both black and white communities. Um, it became the most popular music of the dance halls, the bars and the nightclubs. And when we look at the um, prohibition and you know, the underground bars and nightclubs, it was jazz music that was being played. Now, blues was the most popular amongst African-Americans and particularly in the white community, we had kind of the creation of new dances like the Charleston, which emerged in 1903. Now, some really famous jazz musicians for you to know, we've got Louis Armstrong was the most famous. And then we have others such as Duke Ellington and Bessie Smith, okay? So jazz music was incredibly popular. Sports. So sports um, are becoming increasingly popular during this period and baseball made a huge amount of money. We have famous teams such as the New York Yankees um, and Boston Red Sox. Now, the most famous baseball player at the time was a man called Babe Ruth, who I've got here. 
He played for New York Yankees and became a national hero. By 1930, he was earning $80,000 a year, the equivalent of £7 million today. Um, and even, you know, really famous individuals like Al Capone was a famous baseball fan. Um, so baseball appeals right across the spectrum, rich, poor, um, black, white, you know, multiple different communities. Everyone is interested in baseball, either listening on the radio or going to watch the matches. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is golf. So Bobby Jones took the world by storm in the golfing scene. He won the British Open in 1926, 27 and 1930 alongside four US Open titles. And in terms of boxing, we have a man called Jack Dempsey. Now, Jack Dempsey was an incredibly famous boxing champion and 60 million people tuned in to listen to the heavyweight boxing title fight between Jack Dempsey and Gene Tully. Um, so that shows you the, you know, the incredible accessibility of the radio. Now, the next one I'm going to talk about is cinema. So cinema absolutely booms in this period. And um, studios began producing large numbers of films for example Hollywood obviously is the most famous now main many major movie companies such as MGM Warner Brothers and Paramount had their studios in Hollywood and what we see is movie audiences that used to be kind of 35 million a week in 1919 nearly treble to 100 million people a week by 1930 that's as many people as go to the cinema today in a year were going in a week in the 1920s now, movies had um, audiences, sorry, I've done that one, haven't I? Right, the star system. So movie studios promoted their starring actors. It was all about making it about a person rather than just the plot line, creating a celebrity, okay? Um, they did magazine shoots, they did radio appearances. The whole aim was to emphasize their sex appeal. They were created into sex symbols of the 1920s. Some of the most important ones, we have Clara Bow, um, a female actress. We have Charlie Chaplin and Rudolph Valentino. Now, um, Charlie Chaplin at this time was making around $1,500 a week, which was an absolute fortune in the 1920s. By 1929, Hollywood was making over 500 films a year. Um, and until 1927, all movies were actually silent. I don't know if you knew that. Um, but the first talkie, as they were called, was released in The Jazz Singer in 1927. Now, funnily enough, this actually ruined the careers of quite a few actors, as they might have looked great, but their voices were deemed unusual or they had accents which the industry thought would not be popular. So, um, yeah, the talkies obviously significantly changed the industry. We go from black and white silent films into black and white spoken films, and eventually we have colour films. Now, um, the last thing I want to talk about is the Hayes Code. Now, at this time, all of this change absolutely horrified the older generation who worried about the sexual content of the movies and the impact this would have on morals. So what Hollywood did to try and prove they were regulating this is they introduced the Hayes Code. Now, the Hayes Code limited on-screen kissing to three seconds and it banned nudity. Um, and it was also supposed to not encourage things like, you know, theft and safe breaking into and things like that. But what we see in this period is a dramatic increase in um, the accessibility of entertainment, the increase in people people wanting to follow hobbies um, and entertainment industry has an absolute boom, primarily based on the fact that we have more prosperity in society and people have more time and money to spend on accessing these things.